Hello Dreamers, welcome back to my channel. Today the first tutorial on Dreams 2. We'll talk to you about timeline and flipbook. For the timeline, how I organize the work and with the flipbook, we'll make a simple frame by frame animation. These days I'm testing Dreams 2 a lot and doing a lot of experiments like this project. I think it will be fun. Without forgetting and don't forget that my animal project is going very well. I know I always show you the same initial scene with the car. I don't want to give too many spoilers, but I am already much farther ahead in the story. I am about three quarters of the way through, but I want to intrigue your imagination with a short synopsis. When sometimes emotions bring you to the limit right and wrong, get confused. And in this cruel story it can be fatal. So stay tuned if you want to know how this story ends and please subscribe. First of all, I'll explain how I use the timeline within Dreams. It's very important to be able to keep the scene within a single large group. So if I have to make camera movements, everything will follow what's inside the sequence. This also means that the anchor point of this whole group, which is roughly in the center, will always have to stay there because if, for example, I have to zoom in and anchor point is moved too far to the left, this is the result, which is definitely wrong. This means that the elements within the scene, such as the characters and the background, will do most of the movement, with the camera always remaining pointed at the center. A non-negligible aspect, remember to press two fingers to go back and three to go forward. But this is one aspect that has remained unchanged since Dreams 1. If we enter the group, we also find all the sound effects that relate to the scene. If instead I have a large project like Animal, where there are multiple scenes, there will be a soundtrack at the top that will give rhythm to the scenes. There will be audio tracks between one scene and another to create transitions and obviously the sound effects within each scene. In the timeline I always leave space for a layer that serves us as a color look for the entire project, a photographic filter that determines the tone of the scene. In this case, a blue dark enough to give that feeling of darkness and cold that can be found in a cave. In the group that contains these color layers, the blending mode I use is overlay. Sometimes I add, as in this case, a noise filter to give a more organic feeling to the scene with these dots. If I increase the scale of the effect, you can notice it better. In this case too, the blending mode I use is overlay. With the arrival of Dreams 2 and since, as you can see, I use a lot of tracks, I find the ability to expand and compress the timeline really useful. Other gestures, such as the two fingers zoom, have remained unchanged from Dreams 1. With the three fingers we can widen and squash the tracks by moving up and down. Right and left we can instead lengthen or shorten the entire timeline. Now we can finally directly erase the track together with a layer that fills it. It was really exhausting sometimes to spend time erasing tracks that we didn't need. But don't worry if you have multiple layers on the track, 
if you delete one, it won't delete all the rest. <laughs> many of you ask me how many frames per second I work at. I generally work at 60 frames per second, but this is because the most important thing is that my animations are always based on the rig system, so I don't have to draw every single frame. So with 60 frames I get animations that are more fluid. 60 frames per scene and a new feature now that I think at least for me will be really useful, the possibility to modify the duration of the project directly from the timeline, saving a lot of time. Obviously now the time has come to talk about Flipbook which is the most important new feature in Dreams 2. You have to imagine the flipbook a bit like a group and inside it we find the frames and drawings that we'll create for our animations. If I click on the flipbook in the timeline I can find all these options a bit like we find them on the normal layers. We can decide its duration simply by moving the cursor and by clicking on edit mode we can directly go to draw on frames with all the new and old tools of dreams. But now we'll do a simple exercise, a simple frame by frame animation to test the flipbook workflow. To do this I create a new project for this type of animation. I will use 15 frames per second, otherwise I would have to make too many drawings to do something good and probably in January 2026 I would still be here. <laughs> Let's also shorten the timeline a bit, ok. And I'll immediately add a flipbook to create this animation. The technique I will use for this simple animation is the pose to pose, which is the most used and professional. It involves drawing keyframe of an animation, in this case for example the bent arm and the outstretched arm. So I start from the first frame and draw the bent arm. Beautiful drawing as always. <laughs> now I draw the outstretched arm directly, so the end of the animation. My left hand covers the drawing a bit, but maybe better. Ok, next step will be to add a bit of anticipation, that is the moment of animation that serves a bit as a preparation, and in this case I rotate the forearm in the opposite direction. So for now I'm moving this frame forward and this too. And here I draw the new frame. I also draw a little muscle contracting and the forearm in this position. I would say that there are too few frames at the moment, too fast. <laughs> but let's say that the result can be seen. At this point we go back between these two frames and I'm going to add another keyframe, more or less in the center of the angle that creates the forearm. It will have to be. Ok, I think it's good. The animation is still very fast, we'll see shortly how to slow it down a bit. But for now I draw other keyframes between one frame and another. For example, at this point. Mm -mm -mm, vamos a bailar esta vita nueva.
and already the movement seems slower and more realistic. Mm, now I'll add another one between the last two frames here. Okay, only one. And draw. Obviously I'm drawing badly and quickly, but this is the phase that in technical jargon is called rogue. A quick sketch of the movements. This must mainly serve to create the correct animation with the right timing. But speaking of timing, now I have to fix the initial part, where there is the anticipation. So first of all I have to modify this part. The initial frame will have to be this one and not this one. So let's move this frame forward, this at the first. Let's try how the flipbook behaves. Ok. And for now delete this track and this. Ok. The anticipation phase now works with the forearm flexing a little backwards before unloading the weight forwards. Next step I create a phase in which the arm is still. I then go to lengthen this frame. Try like this. This gives the viewer the opportunity to focus on the protagonist of the scene before the fist hits. But now I have to lengthen the flipbook a bit to add more frames. Let's try another feature of the flipbook. That is the possibility of dividing the frames to modify them when necessary. I basically extended the anticipation phase to three frames I want to add more animations at this point by modifying the basic drawing. I press on the frame and divide the drawing. I take the lasso tool, I want the forearm to be rotated straighter at the first preview frame. Transform and rotate and put here. Ok. I'm going to make some corrections. Ok, great. Now I do a test. The anticipation phase is now better. Since I'm pickly, I want this frame to also be at the end of the anticipation movement, so I'm going to copy and paste here. This I delete. Ok. Ok, now better. I want to add some squash at the end, when the fist eats. This is another of the 12 fundamental principles of animation and will make the movement complete. I create at least two more copies of the final frame. Ok. I go back to the first one and with the lasso tool I select this part, which I then squash and stretch a little with the warp tool. Like this, ok. I'll do the same thing with the second one, but this time I'll squash and stretch a little less as if at this stage the fist was returning to its original shape. Now I can extend the last frame duration and here the result. What do you think? In a simple movement we find three main techniques of animation, pose to pose, anticipation and squash and stretch. We can then also add keyframes for other animations with the move and scale tool directly on the flipbook. For example I want to add some camera movement, as if there was a vibration at the moment of the first. I'll add a keyframe here when the fist hits. I'll take this a little farther. 
and here I had a final keyframe for the moment. At this point, bring up. Now let's do a test. Mm, not bad, but it seems a bit slow. I move this here and this keyframe here too. I add another. Let's do it again. Here I move up and here I move down. Definitely better. The context is missing a bit, such as a character or a background, but this was useful to me first of all to test the new flipbook as a working tool much faster now. It's functional and above all by keeping all the frames within this space in the timeline. Everything will be much cleaner and tighter. Well, dreamers, we have reached the end of another fantastic tutorial. Finally, we have all the tools necessary to let our imagination fly with fantastic projects. The timeline is now much more intuitive to use. Beyond the additions and changes to the options, it's the ability to change its sides by stretching and squashing it that, in my opinion, gives its best. An addition as simple as it's useful. The flipbook is finally as we expected, with the possibility of working on many layers in a single large system, to create all the frame-by-frame -frame animations we want, and above all with the original Procreate tools. I invite you to write me in the comments if you have not understood something or simply want to delve deeper into a topic. I am listening. Thank you so much for watching and...